Hey Combo Cabal, welcome back. Brent Cook with a second popper video this week. I've been loving the Total Storm deck, and uh, honestly, I was going to record with the Epic Storm tonight, but I'm playing in the PTQ this week, and I'd rather not give up uh, my 75 with that information. So instead, I'm going to reveal the popper uh, Cycle Storm list that I've been working on most recently. I recorded a video probably about a month ago with Mystical Teachings in it, and I didn't really like teachings then. Uh, I was playing one Chalarian Winds with two teachings, and I was only running nine lands, I believe. Uh, this list did something I've been very adamantly against up until now. So when you look at this list, there are 26 creatures. That is the fewest that you will ever see in a Cycle Storm deck. Um, the thing is, most lists play 32. And my list has always played 28, which is four fewer than the average list, because I've been playing... Tolarian Winds and Lotus Petals. And those take up additional slots. Well, I feel like Tolarian Winds allows you to churn through your deck pretty quickly and saves mana. So that makes up for a few of the cyclers. Um, Lotus Petals, you know, they fuel the Tolarian Winds that are necessary. Same thing with Stingers. Well, now we're cutting two more cyclers for Mystical Teachings. I've always been really against this. And then I tried it. I was a game away from a 5-0 when unfortunately uh, I just mulliganed into oblivion and didn't get there. It happens. It's part of magic. But I was really, really impressed with having two Tolarian Winds and two Teachings. The big thing about it is that Tolarian Winds discards Mystical Teachings, making it, honestly, the back half might be easier to cast than the front. So uh, keep that in mind. I've really been enjoying it. I've only played the one league, so if this league's a dud, uh, I don't know what to tell you. But in the first league, I really liked it which made me reevaluate my board a little bit. So I was running two shredded sails uh, in the board, but when you have teachings, I feel like you can get away with one. And then a dispel. Dispel is a card you can get with teachings. What this allows you to do is uh, mystical teachings and then counter a crop rotation. Um, Pyroblast, unfortunately, doesn't counter crop rotation. And I was running three duress with the sole purpose of countering crop rotation, so those fit in nicely there. Um... Yeah, I I made a change right before we started recording, and now I'm wondering if I should go back. Uh, I had three Exhum, but originally what I had was two Duress, two Pyroblast, and Dispel. The thing is, Pyroblast is so good against the, the Fairy Delver decks, where I feel like you almost want three. I guess you could do this. Hmm. It's really tough. Part of the point of tonight's video is I really wanted to test Exhum. Now I'm torn. Now you're you're seeing me deliberate in real time. Jeez. Uh, yeah, this is probably fine. I don't love Wonder Us. Like, it feels wrong to me. Like, I don't want to run two Dispel because we're actually using quite a bit of blue mana. And I have a feeling that it's going to, like, two Dispel might just be a lot on the mana. Could just do four Pyro, like this. Let's do that. Um, yeah, let's try this out. Why not? And, because I really did want to test Exhum tonight. So, another nice thing, Mystical Teachings gets Flaring Pain. And then, uh, so my plan currently to be Graveyard Hate is trying out Exhum. I haven't actually got to use it against Graveyard Hate much. In that league, I never cast the Exhum, but I still did pretty well against Graveyard Hate. I've had some success recently with uh, boarding up on lands. So before this list, I was actually trying uh, three Crevice in the board, and then just like casting my creatures over and over and over. Um, I've gone back down to two just because I wanted the room in the board. And I felt like I was overboarding just a, a smidge. So that's why I have the Lurching Rot Beast here over the Architect of Will. It's not because it cycles for one block and I don't have to click twice. That's not it. It's because I've actually cast it and attacked Blue Black Control to death with Lurching Rot Beast. Same thing with Horror of the Broken Lands. Um, yeah. And I feel like I don't need to hard cast them as much when I'm playing Exhum. So that's part of the reason I shaved on a crevice. But we're going to see how this goes. I've really been liking the teachings. I've had a few situations where I am down to like my last 
uh, cycle. I hit teachings, I go get songs of the day, I make 20 mana, flashback teachings, go get reaping the graves, and then easily win. So uh, that's been nice. But yeah, uh, if once again, that's the deck list. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, etc., leave them down below. Also, I'm sure you've watched my other videos, but uh, I'm going for 3,000 subscriptions this month. As of right now, I'm about 250 away. I'd greatly appreciate your support if you want to hit that subscribe button down below. It's completely free. It would mean the world. So uh, please do that. And round number one will be coming up in just a second. I'm sorry if this intro was a little bit rambly. I wasn't planning on making a change to the board and then it just kind of happened. Um, I appreciate your patience. Thanks. Welcome to match number one. We are on the play. Yup. Lands and cyclers. Those are what we call a keep. Get that vent into play where it belongs. Facing D&D &D rocks. Bogles. Feeling pretty safely about my F6 value here and just uh, cycling immediately. All right, well, that wasn't a good start. We really wanted to hit another cycler there. And they're coming in hot. We're going to 16 life. Jeez. All right, we have to cycle this Baron more. Okay, so next turn's probably our last turn of Left Alive, if I'm guessing. So this is seven. We're going to be going to eight. Nine. All right. Uh, math is overrated. I'm going to... Ooh, Reaping the Graves. Let's effing go. I uh, really want to hit additional cyclers off this uh, Caribid cycle. Come on, deck. Be good to me. There we go. This is what I'm talking about. Cycle this. See? Perfect number of cyclers in the deck already. Never didn't have it. Roughly one million mana in our mana pool. Quick, quick, quick. All right, so this Reaping the Graves was a nice draw. Eight, even better than Wheel of Fortune. Don't uh, believe everything I say. It's fine. Or believe everything I say. I'm also good with that. I could play out Dranit Stinger, but honestly, I feel like I'd just rather not reduce my risk of fizzling and I'm going to keep the extra cycler. Because we can always win later, if, as long as we don't fizzle. Tolarian wins is okay. Going to three. All right. So as you saw, we hit a point where um, we. This is why I didn't cast the stinger. Uh, so now I have to make a decision on whether or not I value thirteen mana more than I value the extra draw. So the thing is, we've already used two songs. 
So we're going to need the fourth one to make a bunch of mana if I discard this. So I think I'm actually just going to cast it and bank on the fact that we'll draw action off this. Uh, that was a little hairy. Yikes. There we go. Going to one life. Well, I'm not cycling you. Um... So something I can do here is cast this. Go get that last um, Songs of the Damned. And now it's just super easy. Leaving Street Wraith in the graveyard. We've used three Lotus Petals, so we're going to be able to cast two Singers this turn. Okay, that was, we found it. Now we just need to find another stinger. We have 11 cards left in our deck and three of them are drying stingers. There's one. Let's speed this process up. Well, yes, I would love an untapped land. Thank you. Pretty easy, easy turn four kill. Never didn't have it. I'm going to turn off the auto yields. I don't actually want to draw any more cards, I don't think. So and I'll F6 or auto yield to those again, but I'm not going to draw any more cards. And I'd say this game, we really got to see the power of the blue cards. So those of you watching may be thinking like, hey, why don't you just play the Unearth build? Um, this game, I think you actually got to see that how good the Tolarian Winds and Teachings actually were. Um, yeah. These cards have just continued to really impress me. So we're facing Bogles. Um, I don't know if I actually want a sideboard, if I'm being honest. Like, I think I might just leave it. Like, maybe you could board in Flaring Paint if you think that they're going to have Prismatic Strands, but I wouldn't bank on that. Um, if you wanted to, you could board and Weather the Storm. I don't think that's where I want to be. I think I'm just going to resubmit. You could board in the Crevices over Dark Rituals for stability. That is an option. Unfortunately, I think we need to ship this. Seems fine. Um, to buy a healer. They chose green for sprawl. It's important information, believe it or not, because it gives away hints about what they may or may not have uh, sideboarded in. Like if they name blue, there's a chance that there's a dispel in their hand. And once again, they name green. And there's the bogle.
All right, I'm going to try to hit a land here off the Street Wraith. And boom, rewarded. All right, what do they have here? Two mana. Life link, I'm okay with that. So we're taking five. We're gonna go to thirteen. Reaving the Graves was tremendous. Um so we have to make a decision right now. We're dead to Ancestral Mass next turn, and they have three mana to cast it. It's gonna definitely be lethal. Or we could try to go for it right now. Uh my concern with going for it right now is it's gonna be really difficult. Um because we don't have threshold for this cabal ritual. And this songs doesn't make a lot of mana, so we could sack this, cast Cabal Ritual, and then cycle a few, and then songs. But th it's just like not worth it, in my opinion. I think I'm willing to accept losing to. Okay, well that was a good draw. Um, so that still doesn't give Threshold. Yeah, I'm just gonna risk it. If they have it, unfortunately, it's a thing. But we're not going to win if we try to force it there. I think that's just like how you fizzle 101. Like, we're pretty likely to win on our next turn, so I think you just take that. All right, so we're taking seven. Oh, no, my bad. This creature just came into play. All right, now we jam. And the Tolarian wins. So that's six cards in Graveyard. This pedal's going to be seven. Teachings is probably... Uh, maybe we could cast it. Let's see. Well, that's actually a little awkward with the Tolarian wins. We didn't want to draw another one of those. Um, let's save the colored mana. Let's just cast the songs. So right now, how many mana did that make? I should have counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So we can turn eight creatures right now. If I cast Reaping the Graves, we're only getting five back. All right, I think I'm going to take an alternative route here. I'm going to use the red. I'm going to return. I think I'm going to end up casting both of these before um, we resolve the uh, Tolarian wins. I guess words are difficult. Please forgive me. Going to three... All right, so I currently have four creatures in the graveyard, and this would be for seven. So we want to add three. Petal is not a good draw. Well, that was good, because now we can cycle more of these. We're just going to end up drawing our deck here. <laughs> oh no, another one. Um, what do I want to do?
I think I'm just gonna allow myself to discard the other one. Like we're gonna be drawing half of our deck here. The last one will win the game, and we have 22 mana floating with the teachings. Like, I just don't want to risk drawing the last, uh, reaping the graves and losing. So we're literally drawing half our deck right now. But yeah, like... This deck, when you have both of these cards in it, just, like, it's bananas. I can probably play land. Now is the boring part. I also don't mind this. Like, I enjoy it, but I imagine that it's very boring for you, the viewer, to watch me just cycle 20 times. All right. Let's uh, just show them that they're dead. I guess we can return the street race that will never uh, cycle. No risk of timing out here. So we might as well get a huge hand, am I right? 24 cards. Seven cards left in the deck. You can see that we've actually used all of our Lotus Petals, so we cannot play another Stinger. Kill them with a Baron Moor. They died to a land. Woot woot. 1-0. Mystical Teachings and Tolarian Winds. Best friends forever. Round two on the draw against Is It Necessary? But in, uh, I believe I played them yesterday when I was on Twiddle Storm. And they were on Mono Blue Fairies. So not Is It, if I remember correctly. And this looks like they've switched to Elves. Just going to lead on the vent. Oh, they're on mono green aggro? Okay. Less scary than elves. That's a cool combo. So we're facing down death now. <laughs> wow, what a good draw. Um, that was a fast start for them. Question is, can I do enough this turn? 
So I can cycle this for right off of the vent sack. Eh. So this is a situation where um, Architect of Wool would be better than Lurching Rat Beast, in my opinion. Cabal Rit was a good draw. So this is actually a little bit awkward because I want to sacrifice the vents. Uh, but if I do that, so what happens is this becomes card number five. This is card number six. I don't have a good way of getting Cabal Rit and then songs. I think I have the songs first. Um... I think I'm supposed to just cast the Cabal Rit and then hold the songs. Pretty much need a miracle here, I think. Um, it's fine. Still need a miracle. Like, we're just so unlikely to win from this position, I think. Well, that's a start. I take that newly added uh reap or that newly added mystical teachings off this cycle. Uh instead we fizzled. Uh I mean it happens. Like we drew Tolarian wins where it mattered. Unfortunately, uh, we discard we had to discard the other reaping the graves. They just put us in a spot where we had to win on turn three, and we had a chance on our turn three on the draw in order to win that. So you can't be too upset. Uh, I will be boarding in Weather the Storm, though. Sixty-three. Shave a land. I think that's fine. Really don't want to go below 24 creatures. Like, this is still a fast matchup. I think the plan's like shave two dark rits. Seems fine enough. They're taking a mulligan to five. Let's start off on cycling the stinger. I like trying to find another land before playing Baron more. That's pretty much the reason. All 
Alright. We don't really need more cyclers. At this point, I want mana. Alright, taking eight here, which means that they have lethal next turn. Once again, we're seeing the spot where this Lurching Rot Beast doesn't cycle for blue. Um, I mean, I'm going to gain six here, but it's not a great play. Our draw this game ended up being a little clunky. Yeah, it just didn't pan out. Uh, that sucks. This was just a match where our deck didn't really... Uh, well, that's not fair. They did their thing game one and we attempted to do ours. Game two, our deck didn't uh, cooperate. And, I mean, you got to see, like, the Lurching Rot Beast is not free. Like, there are matches where you can cast it and get there, but there is also situations where not being able to cycle it has a real cost. So you got to see a little bit of A, a little bit of B, um, I guess you didn't see any of A. You just saw a little bit of B. Uh, but yeah, shit happens. 1-1. One, one. I hope you're ready to bounce back because that's what we're going to do. We are on the play. Seems great. Keep. It's entirely possible that I shouldn't have boarded in weather and just like kept the dark rituals in the deck. Uh, maybe that was a boarding mistake on my part in match number two. Like, I don't know. It's just a thought. Like, it's also entirely possible that that's just like a biased opinion based on how things went. Love the land draw there. All right. So we're facing Tron. I'm just going to pass here. So this is a tough matchup because of crop rotation in Tupajukabog. Well, they're not going to have it this turn. So if we can find um, Reaping the Graves, I might be willing to go for it. Cycle. All mana this game. <laughs> All right. So I think one of our better... ah, oh, Damn it. I was going to say one of our better draws would actually be Mystical Teachings because then I could beat Crop Rotation into Bog. Um, this is just sad at this point. Now they have uh, the Flicker, uh, the blue one. I can't think of what it's called, but they can do that on their Bajuka Bog now, which is going to make things a little bit more difficult. Honestly, I'm just going to discard the Cabal Rat. We're probably not winning this, but... We had a window, we missed it. Hmm. 
Oh, there's Reaping the Grace, but now we don't have any creatures in our bin. Got back Mole Drifter. Ephemery? No, that's the white one. What is the blue one? I should just look it up. I I have Goldfish open. Ghostly Flicker. They can Ghostly Flicker their Majuga Bog. Are they really F6'd? No, they can't be F6'd. Okay. We're in a really tough spot because we need our songs to make more mana than this. I think I almost just want to do like a value uh, reaping the graves here. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm just going to pass. Like, we're not winning if I try to win with, like, our songs making four mana. Three mana in their pool. Wow, they could have done that. They must have thought it was bait. So they only have one more, well, the the average list. I don't know what our opponent's exactly playing. But uh, most lists only play two Ghostly Flicker. That said, um, if they had a Tron land here, they have Mystical Teachings, then they have access to the other one. They technically had enough mana already. All right, well, still no Tron. Is this our spot? They have one, two, six mana. So they're a mana short of teachings into Flicker.
I'm just trying to play a little bit cautiously. Like, I don't know if I really... That was a good draw. Um, I'm, like, trying to make sure that I'm not just, like, wasting all of my colored mana. Just say ghostly flicker. All right, you drew both of your cards. That's fine. Next game. All right. So my, my plan here is actually to just board out dark ritual. It seems a little bit crazy, but I think it's the best plan. I'm also boarding out Vantasaur. Some people have had success with uh, bringing in an Exhum because you just bring back... Like, they're not actually good at removing creatures. So if you bring back Horror of the Broken Lands early, you can really mess them up. Um, maybe this is slightly better. This is so much interaction. Like, I don't know if you're allowed to just board down to 20 creatures. Like, that's just, it seems a little crazy to me. Maybe what I could do is just, like, shave on petals and then maybe board out one wins. And then, like, one more cycler. Let's try this. I've never boarded in Exhum versus um, Tron before. I'm still learning quite a bit. This seems fine. You can also just like hard cast Horror of the Broken Lands. Interesting that they kept a double mine hand. I wonder if that means that they just like have a Zhukabog or something. I'm also not far away from just hard casting these two creatures. Oh, they're just passing? Yeah, we're definitely on the hard cast plan. Oh, well, there's another one. You have a Bonders Ornament. Cast down, really? A little surprised by that. Um, that is not in stock list. That's, I guess they have one in the board. Let's cycle this. I could go for it this turn. Uh, they are tapped out. Maybe that's the plan.
Hmm. Just trying to think through my options here. I could also maybe put two horrors into play. So if I sacrifice this, it gives me threshold. What does teachings do here? My storm count's like still relatively low. Well, I definitely want the Horror of the Broken Lands. I feel like the play here, honestly, might just be double Horror Go. We've already burned two songs. Yeah, I like the double horror plan. Maybe I messed up. Maybe I should have cast thing or two. And I think I'm just going to cycle these now. Dig deeper into the deck. So they're not concerned about the horrors. Horror beats. All right. Well, that's one way to win. So they have one cast down. Yeah, I think I'm going to continue with this plan. And I think we made the right call. Like, when you looked at how we boarded, I think it would have been really aggressive to go for it there. Hmm. They kept seven. I'm going to try this hand, but I don't love it. You need to hit land drops. There's a land. Getting rid of the healers because they're not actually that important to our game plan. That's an interesting line. 
they're giving us a window here if we wanted it, but unfortunately, I don't think we can take it. Well, that's a start if we wanted to. So I can definitely bring back horror. Um... Need to think about this for a minute. Because we can also sacrifice the vents, uh, cycle twice, Songs of the Dam makes seven mana after I tap this. I probably want to leave the blue open, so six mana. Sorry, I, I have 13 minutes. I just want to make sure that I'm not messing up. Could have boarded in moments piece as well. Alright, I'm going to cycle Singer. I just want more info. Alright. I'm just going to bring back. No blocks. So we cast moments piece. That's fine. This could be a good spot for us to go for it. Loving the land drops, and I'm not saying that sarcastically. I actually mean it. <laughs> so they're a power plant away from Tron at the moment. Another power plant. A little bit of afraid of a second crop rotation here, and they have mystical teachings too. 
We play two teachings. I think I'm going to cycle the stinger on the end step, save some mana. I like that reaping the graves draw. I think I have a pretty good shot to win here. Um, I think I want to respond to this. So th this is all going to stay on the stack. Because we can now cycle, so if they have like, uh, well we can respond to whatever they get here. But uh, we can also cycle into a, a Pyroblast and counter this Hydroblast as well. And that's another Songs of the Dam that will res uh, resolve. Cycle. Nine minutes left. Still don't really want to um, use the blue mana yet.
So I still have the one to spell in the deck that I want to find. There it is. Okay, so now what I can do is I can counter this Pyroblast. Or counter the Hydroblast, I'm sorry. So now if they have another Hydro Blast, I can, um, you know what I'm trying to say here. Or, so my actual goal of this game is to win with the Horror of the Broken Lands, and we have Dispel back up for, um, or they can just tap their color here, and now we Dispel. So now the game plan, by the way, is we're going to cycle into one of the last two Power Blasts and just attack with Horror. Honest, so we, we kind of have dealer's choice here. But I think it's technically safer to... Um, I guess we could also do why not both. All right, so now we can start. Okay, they're just going to concede. We could Pyroblast and attack here. I know that they're tapped out other than three colorless, but yeah. Also, I feel like this is screenshot worthy. Just saying, look at that horror of the Broken Lands. Boom. All right, so we're two and one now. Two more matches to go. Well, last round was sweet. I hope this one is two. We're on the play. Can't keep that. Or this. Come on, Doc. <laughs> I guess we're going to try to get some... Uh, I could go turn one Horror of the Broken Lands and hope that a 4-4 wins. Let's fucking go. <laughs> We're all in. Is this good enough? Come on. Concede. Concede. I don't know what deck this beats, but I wanted to imagine that our opponent's playing the deck this loses to. We didn't see a land in any hand. <laughs> Come on, please concede. Ah, <laughs> oh, they're on Affinity. Yeah, Affinity can definitely beat this. Step one. We're so close. Ah, oh, that's going to beat us.
I think we need to fake the attack. They're doing no blocks. What? Oh. So close. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> That's gross. Uh. I'm just gonna concede. We're not winning this. We we gave our mole the four a uh, good on a shot. All right. Um. This is probably pretty free to board in now with mystical teachings. Just like swap with a vantasaur. Let's try this. I do like boarding in the crevice when I'm boarding in the shredded sail. And boarding up one land after a mulligan to four doesn't hurt. Um, yeah, slightly more consistency gives us the backdoor option of possibly beating a relic or something like that. So, Friendly reminder, if you want to see me play your combo deck, make sure you check out our donation decks page on the epicstorm.com. Highly recommend it. There's three different tiers. But if you're not interested in doing a, do a donation deck, you're always welcome to, you know, go to the shop. Get yourself a mini token pack, a pint glass, or a Storm 20 baseball tee. And if you've already done that, I imagine you've done this, but just in case, open up that description down below, expand it, go to that social section, and follow all of our social media channels. Game two. Let's do it. Seems fine to me. Not mulliganing off to four. Great start. We're just looking to cycle on their end step. Not a tog is always nice to see. Good draw. Come on, tap that land. There you go. So now we have a clean window this turn to try to win. Loving the Street Wraith draw. Makes this a lot easier. And our deck, it looks like our deck wants us to win a game, so that's nice. Cycle, cycle, cycle. We have nine creatures in the graveyard. So what I'm wondering right now is if I should mystical teachings for Tolarian wins. And I think the answer might be yes. Because it's going to be, we'll, we'll be leaving one creature in the bin. And that is a 
seven nine mana line that would leave us with five mana floating and eight cards in hand alternatively i could mystical teachings for reaping the graves have um eight cards in hand and like 20 mana floating that might honestly be better Actually, I could also flash this back. So why not both? I think that's the real answer here, is why not both? Mm. Actually, this makes nine mana. So we lose a mana somewhere if we take this line. It just raises storm count. I don't know what our opponent's thinking of here. Like, they're tapped out. This format doesn't have four, so I'll just hit F6. So we go get Cabal Rit. Or, I'm not, sorry, not Cabal Rit. Songs of the Damned. Uh, we go down to 10. We go up to 20, down to 13. Yeah, we end up at the same mana. It's just like we're losing a Songs. Uh, another line we could do is we're returning eight. We could play double stinger and then have six cyclers in our hand and we would just need to draw four cyclers, which is pretty reasonable. And if that's the line, then I actually like this, the flashback songs line. So, we have nine creatures, seven. This is like almost deterministic, but not quite. Just start at the top. So we're going to be able to return all of our creatures this way. We just need to hit like a few cyclers. And now we begin. All right, we've got this. Easy peasy. And that, I mean, even before that, we had it. The uh, Horror of the Broken Lands was exactly enough. Okay. They've conceded game three. It looks like they debated pretty hard over playing that uh, Thraben Inspector. So I think that they had interaction and they just didn't use it. Whatever that interaction may be. We could board in like a singleton to spell to get with mystical teachings. I don't think I like that. I'm just going to leave it as is. If you're interested in leveling up your storm game, don't forget the Epic Storm offers tutoring. 
different variety of formats. It doesn't have to be legacy. I know that's what I'm known for, but anything that I offer here on this channel, I will do tutoring in. So if you're interested in that, theepicsfirm.com slash tutoring. Okay, game three, we're on the draw. This hand is interesting. Wins wasn't terrible. A no A tog is always good in my book. So now we want mystical teachings or reaping the graves off the top, preferably uh, reaping the graves itself. Probably cycling this Baron more. All right, I guess we're playing one. Almost a third into our deck at this point. They're leaving open protection mana. So they have something good. Okay. All right, so they have one more mana up. Um, technically, there's only six in the graveyard. I don't need to do this yet. I can just... I don't need to tip my hand. I can just bring back the six we have.
keep on cycling. Get rid of this green mana, we don't want that. Teachings was a good pickup. We do have to be uh, wary of Galvanic Blast right now. They only have one uh, red open, so they can only deal us four. I could uh, cycle once more, but then if they, like, I end up having to sack uh, a petal or a vent for, tap a vent for black, and I feel like it's pretty free here to just keep my color mana open. And that was our last songs, by the way. Sorry, I felt like it was glitching there. Maybe it's all in my head. Boom. All right, so they do have this red creature in play. So we have to uh, win with that creature's ability on the stack. And if they try to kill Dranit Stinger right now, this thing kills itself. So we don't need to, like, if they kill this one, we don't have to worry about it. Sure. This is going to be a pretty quick death for our opponent. Why not draw the cards? It doesn't hurt us. Ooh, we could kill someone with uh, Shredded Sails.
You're not going to win this. <laughs> All right. 3-1. Let's get that 4-1. We're on the play for match number 5. Unfortunately, I cannot keep that. This seems decent. We're going to break the cardinal rule here. We're going to bottom at Reaping the Graves. With Tolarian wins, we don't really want two of them. His hand's well-rounded. I mean, it's not bad. Yikes. I have a feeling if they're leading off on Bajuka Bog, that means they're picking it back up very soon. I mean, I needed a cycle there because I needed it at the land drop, and there's the... I, I called it. <sighs> We're in trouble. Opponent chooses to not play the bog. At this point, I think I'm supposed to like ritual reaping the graves on their turn. Let's see what else I can do here. I feel like next turn's probably our turn. Swamp. So there doesn't like a bug control deck? I'm not really sure what's happening. I think I'm going to discard a Tolarian ones here. Like, we don't need two of that card. Really love it if they, like, tapped out for a Mole Drifter or something. I don't know why I tapped the silver vent to do that. That was a slight mistake on my part. And I'm just playing super hard into a second Bajuka Bog here. All right. That was solid. So I could have gone for it like the previous two turns. I was a little bit worried about my one Songs of the Dam getting countered and then me fizzling. Um, so now we're just going to wait for them to tap low again and try to get them.
I'm not really sure what our opponent's playing. It looks just like a bug mid-range deck. It's not on the front page of Goldfish. And it's also not on the back. So uh, this must be a brew. All right, they've tapped some mana. Let's get them. They probably have one counter spell up if I had to guess, maybe two. They're really letting all these resolve, huh? Pretty free for me to do a few cycles here. This room's only seven. Three, yeah, okay. Um, definitely have nine creatures here. So we're going to draw most of the rest of our deck, assuming that this Tolarian Winds resolves. So much mana. I think it's okay to go to 10 here. I'm just going to burn some mana. We don't need 30 mana. So assuming that all of our spells resolved, I think that our opponent probably just has a buttload of removal in their hand.
So we've used all four Reaping the Graves. Uh, one, two, three. Um, is that true? Do I still have one? One, two, three. Uh, it looks like we might still have one, so I'm not worried about that dying. Alright, they did us a favor and just conceded. That was nice of them. I think I'm going to want the exhumes here. I have to imagine the deck with blue in it has targets for this stuff. Is this crazy? 20 creatures. Probably made me feel a little bit better if I had 22. Let's try this. Seems like a keep to me. Opponent is just mulligan to four. To me, that says, hey, I'm looking for a bazooka bog. That's a cute trick. I like that. I've never seen that before. They got an island here. Hmm. Could exhume. Bring back the Street Wraith. Let's do it. So we know that they have Island Two Unknowns. Ah. Oh. Jeez. Island Swamp Unknown? I think I'm supposed to cycle this. Maybe I'm not supposed to board in Pyroblast. I mean, we're not seeing a lot of blue cards yet. Jeez. 
Jeez, I'm getting punished here. I'm going to lose to the Moldafor. All right, so they still have the island in their hand. They didn't attack with Visionary, that's strange. I don't think I actually want Baron more. So Sulfur Vent was good. Keeps our Dispel and our Pyro Blast up next turn. One has one card in hand. They have the Bonders Ornament. They're going to start out grinding us. my and I can't even counter that Unfortunately, we don't have a cycler in our hand. Caught with egg on her face. I'm just digging right now for reaping the graves. Mystical teachings too. running out of time. There's a certain land I would like them to not draw. <laughs> so the only blue we've seen so far is Coiling Oracle. Jeez. I think I'm supposed to just discard a Pyroblast here. We're never going to cast four. That was brutal. 
we definitely just lost to the Mola Four. I think next game I'm, I'm going to board up two Pyroblasts and keep in two. cast that. Maybe I should even board out the exhumes. I don't know. Maybe I should just stay combo focused. Because it looks like this deck didn't have a lot of interaction. And they have creature removal, so like they didn't board out cast down. Oh, I just realized they had lethal. I would have done this on my main phase and not discarded a Cabal Ritual had I realized. Alright, so they do have uh, counters in their deck. That's good to know. Maybe I'm supposed to keep Empire Blast? We would need like the best chain of top decks right now. Sure. I think the right pick here is actually Cabal Rat. Weather the storm. Okay, next game. Can't believe we lost in the middle of the four. We gave them so much time to come back. Alright, so I think I'm supposed to stay combo focused. I don't know how much of that, but I don't think I want the exhumes.
let's try this out. I don't feel like I need all of the uh, Pyroblast. Like, it doesn't seem like they have that much uh, counter magic. Here, I think we're supposed to bottom. Hmm. I guess the pedal. This thing is not very good. We need to draw some cyclers. Come on, Doc. Left back visionary. Don't have too much time left. We need to draw like a chain of cyclers. That's how we win this game. Into reaping the graves. They're giving us no respect for, like, they're just tapping out, and we can't do anything. Oh, should I cast that? I mean, we're down two songs of the damned if I play this. I don't think I can afford to. So next turn they're attacking for seven. Pestilence doesn't kill us. Let's try to figure out a plan. <laughs> um... So 
So we can only go as low as four, by the way. Otherwise, Pestilence kills us. We still have Petal for red. Really need a hit of songs. Or not a songs. Uh, what's it called? Reaping the Graves. Mystical Teachings was a good pickup. I don't know if it's good enough anymore, but we'll find out. Do we really want to discard? Our hand. I feel like the answer is yes. Only because we used two songs of the dam, so we're a little bit pinched on mana. So my concern here is us drawing a bunch of lands off this. That said, I don't know if we can afford to cycle. Just because... For a number of reasons, actually. I guess we have four Dark Ritual, two Songs, two Cabal Ritual in the deck. I'm just going to click... like. I'm just going to let it resolve. Ugh. That was bad. That was good. Is there a chance we actually pull this off? That's all four songs, by the way. Wow. Um, we still have two Lotus Petal in the deck. Let's try to win this.
All right, so this is the only blue mana they have up. Um, but they have three black open. Technically four. Seven minutes left. I don't need to play too quickly. We're at 12. It's going to be close on mana. Maybe even cyclers, too. We do have one more Reaping the Graves left in the deck, I believe. Twelve cards. Oh, geez. Did we just fizzle? I think it is fizzled. I needed to hit the Reaping the Graves in the top uh, X amount of cards. Um, I think I just lost. Well, they just gave us an opening. Oh my, are we going to do it? Come on, Doc, please. No! Oh. <sighs> We're dead. That was a heartbreaker. But that was an exciting match. Um, so I can cast Reaping the Graves, get back Cyclers, but like we, we don't have any mana left in our deck. So uh, our opponent played well. They got us. Uh, we finished 3-2, which is fine. I mean, that was an exciting game. Uh, unfortunately, we, you know, it, we got hit by variants a little bit, um, especially early on, not drawing any Cyclers, but... Ended up being pretty competitive still. Um, that was a real nail biter. I like this list quite a bit. Um, I don't know if I missed Duress at all. We didn't face any real blue decks. 
we had a few games where our draws just like unfortunately didn't really work. Maybe part of that was me boarding, and I'm open to your constructive criticism if you have it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like, there's a few spots this league where I feel like I could have possibly uh, have done better. Maybe boarding for round five. Possibly boarding for round two. Just some thoughts. Who knows? Uh, but once again, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.